there folks, welcome back to my channel and for this video I'm going to be looking at another Scottish book by another Scottish writer. So before I actually get on to the book I'm going to be looking at for this video, if you're enjoying my channel, if you're enjoying my videos, if you can click on the subscribe button, click on that notification bell, leave some likes, leave some comments, it's always really appreciated. And if you'd like to support the channel further, I will post a link to the channel's coffee.com page in the description bar below and in a pinned comment in the comment section. So with that out of the road, uh, the book that I'm going to be looking at for this video is called The Golden Bird by George Mackay Brown. And as I say on the bottom of the cover, that is the winner of the James Tate Black Memorial Prize. It's not a prize that I've heard of before, but still an award winning book. And if you can actually see on the front cover, not sure how much you can actually make out, but you will see there's uh, what looks like kind of scratches on stone. I think this, if I remember correctly, uh, this is actually supposed to be an example of Ogham, which was a ancient writing form that was found in Scotland. Uh, dates back to prehistory, if I'm not mistaken. So just the cover itself very much ties the, the contents of the book in with the history of Scotland, uh, with a more ancient time, with a more historical time, and that very much does tie in with what the book itself is dealing with. So uh, The Golden Bird is actually two Orkney stories, so it is very much set in the Isle of Orkney, or the Isles of Orkney. Uh, usually when you're talking about this archipelago, we don't call it the Isles of, we don't, we don't really call it the Isles of Orkney. I think that's actually kind of uh, frowned upon, if I'm not mistaken. It is often just referred to as Orkney. Uh, and yeah, so that is very much where these stories are set. They're set uh, in Orkney and it deals with a period in time with, when the traditional life in Orkney is shifting into the modern period, or into mo a more modern way of life. So the more traditional way of life is coming under threat, is not really going to be seen as being something that's going to survive into the modern world. And this book actually has two separate stories. Uh, the first one is called The Golden Bird, which is where the book gets its name from. and uh, the second story is called The Life and Death of John Vaux. But, and I have taken notes uh, about both both stories. Uh, and I'm not too sure if you could probably class these as shorter stories or more novella. Or, or yeah, there might be more kind of a novella length, uh, the two different stories. But because they've been put into, into the one book, it kind of makes it into more of a normal novel length book. And with the first uh, story, uh, The Golden Bird, it deals with, there's two separate families, there's the Gorse family and I do hope I'm pronouncing this correctly because this is a, a, a family name I've never came across before. It's the Fekoi family. I do apologise if I'm mispronouncing that. And the, essentially the whole premise of this story is that there's a feud between these two families and they essentially want to have a nothing to do with each other. And it essentially goes on for at least like three generations. And it all starts off simply enough that uh, the, the two husbands, the two men from like either one from either family, been out fishing and there ends up being a squabble which was instigated by the two wives over the share of that day's catch. And that very much does highlight the fact that even the simplest thing can cause strife, can cause difficulty and hardship. And there is very much a focus on life within the Orkneys, that it's going from this very uh, difficult 
lifestyle is kind of very much uh, based around the land, a bit about the fish, farm, uh, be able to support yourself and your family from what little you do have to a more modern way of life. And that doesn't really seem to be as connected to the land or to where everyone's come from or a connection to the past. It very much, the, mo the modern way of life does seem to be very disconnected to, to what has come before. And this is very much highlighted the fact that a lot of the, the young people who once lived in the valley that uh, the story of the Golden Bird is set in, aren't they moving away, they're going elsewhere, uh, they're looking for better prospects and better opportunities. So they're going to like Kirkwall, they're going to the bigger towns, they're uh, taking up positions on, on uh, larger fishing ships, uh, becoming sailors and pretty much leaving the area to the older generation with very few young people there to sustain it. And I do like the the imagery of like when one of the older people dies or when uh, the last of the old people uh, who have lived in a certain cottage or croft passes on. That croft is left empty, it's left dark and it finally just is left to go to ruin. And again that is very kind of symbolic of the destruction of the older way of life that would have once been found on the islands all across. And the older generation are very much presented as being resistant to the change that's coming. Uh, and they, they very much rep uh, represent what is going to be lost and what is going to be essentially discarded with the coming of modernity, essentially. And this resistance that they have to modernity is very much uh, rooted in their belief and their certainty that they, their way of life, the older way of life, the more traditional way of life, uh, should continue and has to continue and that uh, the, the younger generation should continue with the life that the, the older generation or older generations have lived and created in the, the, within their community and that the younger generation or young, younger generations shouldn't be going off in order to look for better prospects or a better way of life. And the conflict that is created with uh, the old way of life giving way to the more modern way of life can clearly be seen in one of the, the points in the story where the new young teacher uh, is invited to a, to a meal with the laird, the laird's wife and the local minister. And Again, with the 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 minister, the laird, and his wife, the laird's wife, they all very much represent the unquestioning traditional older way of life. Uh, they are very much set in their ways. They have their own ideas. They think that things should, should be done in a certain way, and that that way of life should just continue. While the young teacher, who's vegan, who's vegetarian rather than vegan. Uh, who has ideas that the the layer the minister and the the the, the layer's wife sees being kind of threatening and highfalutin and uh, questionable, very much represents uh, modernity and the new way of life, and. Again, this change and this kind of conflict between change and tradition is very much seen with the creation of a, a new fishing boat that is actually called the Golden Bird, which is where the short story come, uh, gets its name from. Uh, sorry, but that was a, a noisy car going by. So the, the story of the Golden Bird and therefore the book, the Golden Bird, gets its name from 
this new uh, boat that uh, one of the children from I can't I can't remember if it's the uh, what which family it's from, but it's one of the families that are feuding. That he builds this new ship or has this new ship built for him, and he's certain that this ship will weather any storm and isn't willing to take a tell from anyone, least of all not from his father, who's very much still relying on more traditional fishing or using more traditional knowledge because of his years spent uh, fishing in a more traditional fashion. And this leads to uh, the destruction of the golden bird in a storm and uh, the loss of life in the process, uh, which is can very much be uh, compared to uh, the smaller, more traditional fishing boats of the valley that these all people, all these people live in, which all pretty much survive because they've realised that their storm's coming and they've all went home, they've all went to harbour and have taken shelter, while uh, the young man who has a golden bird has remained out at sea and has went out as far as he possibly can and obviously until it doesn't realise the danger until it's too late. So uh, the golden bird itself is very much a cautionary tale that yeah, the moder modernity and change can be a good thing, but it also has its pitfalls and its dangers. And there are times where we maybe should have to listen or maybe, maybe should stop and take note of a uh, more traditional knowledge. Uh, or more of a, an understanding of things that can't really be gained through a more modern way of life. So again, it's like uh, the story of the Golden Bird is very much a cautionary tale. And you could probably say that the, the, the second story in this book, the light, which is called The Life and Death of John Vaux, is probably also again another cautionary tale. And again, it very much plays on the whole conflict between change and change modernity and those who maybe want to remain within a more traditional way of life. And the story itself does very much shift between what could probably be classed as being more like the present or more Or more, uh, yeah, that's probably, probably the closest time I can think of, be more of the present of the story. Uh, when you get these little snippets of what is actually ha happening to John Vaux in the present. And these snippets of what is happening to him in the present do get a wee bit bigger as the story gets goes along. But a lot of uh, the story itself, a lot of what we see and a lot of the action, is actually told in flashback. That you see, essentially see uh, Jock when he's a young, a young sailor, when he's a young man, and you see him at the sort of story. He has just arrived home from being out as a sailor and working on different ships. And he's arrived home back in Orkney and there is the Lannis Fair that's taking place. So essentially this is at the start of August, so it's right at the start of uh, the harvest season, which is what the Lannis fe uh, festivals and fairs are celebrating. And there's all these different things that are going on, all the different music, different performers, uh, everything's getting a bit kind of loud and leery, and he does feel a wee bit uncomfortable with all this that's going on uh, essentially in his hometown. And you do find out throughout the story itself that even though his name is John Vole, that is his uh, official name, that's his, that's his the name that appears on his certificate or, or his birth certificate, is often referred to as Jock. And for those who don't know, the name Jock is often used for someone who is Scottish, 
it's kind of a bit of as a a nickname. So it's a bit like uh, calling somebody who is Irish Paddy. Uh, but I think in this sense, it might also be used in the same way that the name Jack would be used in England for anyone who's called John. Uh, and that I think is why with him having the given name of John, his nickname is, jo is, is Jock. It's essentially the same as Jack done in England. And also get, having them have the name or the nickname Jock also can maybe kind of create possibly creates a sense of of being a kind of Scottish everyman. Because again, the, the, the reason why Scots do tend to be called Jock is because in Scotland we have the the saying we're all Jock Tamsin's Bears. And I'll try and say that a little bit slower. We're all Jock Thompson's Bairns. Essentially, Bairns is a, a Scottish word or a Scottish word for children. So it essentially means that we're all Jock Thompson's children, which is used to, to mean that we're all the same. None of us are any different or any better than anyone else. We're all the same. So even though I do think that, that the name Jock has been used in a sense of being the same or similar to Jack in England, it does as I say as I was saying, it does create this sense of uh, jo John Vaux being this Scottish everyman. That it very much does represent this kind of sense that there is this conflict between Scotland's having traditions and having an older way of life and the sense of modernity always pressing on, pressing forward. And there is a bit of a kind of strange dream sequence within the first chapter of the life and death of John, of John Vaux. And it does very much create a sense that he's being judged by everyone he knows that essentially in the dream he is surrounded by all these people and he, he tends to, he, you know, at first he doesn't recognise them who they are or he, he, he doesn't recognise who all who them are or who all, all of who all of them are but he does kind of realise or kind of pick up on certain people he knows or certain people he remembers and certain people he who he knows could not possibly be there. So either he knows that people are judging him, and this is his subconscious kind of working this out, or or working on that as something that he, do, he does have in the recesses of his mind, or it's something that he feels happening because he knows that his life isn't what everyone else in Orkney would expect or want. And possibly as symbolic of the guilt that he feels for uh, going off and being a sailor and live, then leaving everyone he knows behind. So he's, he's left his mum and his sisters behind and they've had to deal with the croft by themselves while he's gone off sailing and doing all these other things like in the Americas and elsewhere. And how he's had to leave uh, people that he's met elsewhere in the world, he's had to leave them behind as well. So it, it, it is possible that he has developed this kind of sense of guilt, that he is just this piece of tumbleweed and without really any roots and he's kind of left, just left people in his wake. And his thoughts keep returning to that, to somebody he met in Argentina, somebody called Juanita. And she was somebody who he actually had feelings for and actually cared really deeply for. And she does crop up a few times, or, she, or the memory of her is brought up a few times throughout the story. And it's only after he returns that he finds out that his mother has died of a stroke the month previously. 
and so he, at that point he was still at sea his mother's died the house has been sold so he no longer has a home he his, his family cross has been sold to someone else and which very much does add to the sense of of John not having any roots or any of the time to that area. And it's only when he ends up meeting his uh, future wife that things start to maybe settle down a bit more. And there is one sex within uh, the story, the, the life and death of John, John Vole, that I actually quite, find quite interesting. And there's this bit that once John's married, settled down, got himself uh, a croft of his own for him and his wife, that him and a lot of other people who have come to help him cut peat, they're out again working outside, they're cutting peat for uh, the fires, which will keep them through, going through the winter. And while they're outside working, cutting the peat, they come across uh, the skeletal remains of a prehistoric child who has obviously been buried kind of out in the peat bog and that they've been buried with uh, some arrows, some arrow heads and essentially a wee kind of uh, pot, a kind of uh, clay pot of some sort which would have contained something within it, possibly some sort of food and The fact that yeah, initially they they are uh, going to go and get the authorities, get somebody like like an archaeologist from Edinburgh University to come have a look at what they found. But it is after Jock has a strange dream, after falling asleep asleep at the table, where he sees this young child who is dressed like an Eskimo, or an Inuit. And the, the, the child, this child looks lost, and despite John's best efforts, uh, the child doesn't want to have anything to do with where they find themselves, doesn't want to take any food, doesn't want, yeah, it just lo looks frightened and scared and lost. And this could almost be like a, a kind of symbolic representation of the, the disconnect and the lack of connection between uh, the old way of life and tradition and the more modern way of life. And because the, the ghost itself, the, or the ghost that we see in Jock Stream, is very much represented as being someone who's ripped out of their own time and their own world and forced into a time in a world that they don't know, they don't understand and they struggle to, to comprehend. And, and it very much, to me that very much kind of symbolises that this lack of understanding between those who are very much for tradition and those who are pretty much for modernity and change. But I also kind of get the feeling that there is a possibility that John also feels trapped in a world that he, where he doesn't quite belong or he doesn't quite understand. And the story itself, the story of the life and death of John Vaux does have a very strange and enigmatic ending. This is a, it's a sort of ending that very much does leave the reader thinking about it after they've finished reading. And it's a sort of ending that very much does stay with the reader after they've closed the book and put it away. Because again, they're just thinking over their heads, trying to figure it out. But again, I, as a collection of two novels, short stories, or whatever they've classed as, uh, The Golden Bird by George Mackay Brown is definitely a collection of two stories that I would recommend getting and enjoying, especially if you're uh, maybe wanting, wanting to read something based more in around uh, Orkney. And yeah, so I, I do have 
some more of George Mackay Brown's uh, books in one of the bookshelves. I think probably, I think that possibly were at the one towards the window. So I will try and read some of these books, more of his books as soon as I can. But hopefully you will all have been intrigued by The Golden Bird and hopefully you will all go out and treat yourself to a copy. Try and move the book over to the edge so I'm able to get a clear view of the cover itself. And yeah, this is one that I would definitely recommend. And yeah, so hopefully you will have enjoyed this video. Hopefully you will be intrigued by The Golden Bird by George Mackay Brown. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.